Raise your hand. I, I want to pray for you. We're going to start with praying. Okay, we're going to get our hearts right with the Lord. If that's you, I want to pray for you. If you've ever been hurt, if you, ever, if you find yourself today in a place of deadness, something needs to be resurrected in your life. Something needs to be made new. Jesus is here to do that. Close your eyes. Those of you, my hand is raised. I need the Lord. I need the Lord today. I need Jesus today. And so, Lord, we give our time, our hearts, and our minds even now to you, Lord. And we're here today because you rose again. If you didn't rise again, we can pack up and leave right now. But no, that's not the case. The message is still ringing true today. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. He is alive. To any brother or sister that finds themselves today, Lord, in a dead situation, a dead end with a relationship, maybe it's a relationship with a, with a loved one, Lord, minister to them. Minister to them. Anyone here who finds themselves at, the, at a dead end with their, with their physical health, with their finances, with their jobs, whatever the case may be, Lord, you're here to minister to us and to touch us. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we serve the risen Christ, that you are for us and not against us, that all your plans for us are good plans. Lord, anyone here who doesn't know you, we pray you would soften their hearts today. Salvation is of the Lord. I'm not here to save anybody. I can't save anybody. But Lord, you're here and you're mighty to save. Do your work by your spirit, Lord. We look to you now. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Saints, it is such a joy to be together to worship our risen Savior this morning. Let's all stand to our feet. Lord is alive. Let's sing this together. Praise Him. So praise Him like we're there in glory. Here and now He's just as holy. Jesus, He's so
I'm so glad that my freedom 
this Jesus. Saints, we have the blessed assurance that our Lord calls us his own, that nothing can ever pluck us from his hand. Let's sing this together. I'm living proof of what the mercy of God can do, what the grace of God can do. The Lord has been good to me. Saints, is that your testimony too? The Lord's been good to you. Oh, he's been so gracious and kind. Think back to the day that he saved you. Think of where you were. Think of the mess you were in. Think of how lost you were and his tender mercy found you, touched you, saved you, gave you new life. Think about the praise song that he put in your heart. He lifted you up out of that miry clay. 
and you set your feet upon a rock. Saints, I'm thankful today. I'm so thankful today for everything the Lord has done. He has been good to me. He has been kind and gracious. He has been long-suffering. He's been patient. Oh, man, has the Lord been patient with me. Man, has he been patient and gracious and long-suffering. Lord, we thank you. We're here to worship you. Lord, we're here to seek you. We're here to be touched by you and be ministered by you. We've come here looking for you, Lord, the risen Christ. Minister, minister to our hearts, Lord. Lift us up, encourage us, Lord. Again, if anyone is here and is lost, they don't know of your mercy or, or your kindness or your grace. To them, the resurrection is about Easter bunnies and food and a day off. Oh, uh, Lord, help them. Lord, open their eyes like you opened our eyes, Lord Jesus, to the truth of your death the truth of your resurrection, the truth of eternal life, the truth of sin and damnation and eternal separation from you. Open their eyes and their hearts, their ears to the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is still today the power of God unto salvation. Amen? Amen. 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 You may be seated. If any of you are standing Towards the back, there's uh, some seats here in the front. You can come join us here. What an absolutely beautiful day he's given us. Would you allow me the privilege this morning of reading to you one of the gospel of accounts of our Lord's resurrection? We find it in Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. I'll read it. It says, early on Sunday morning... As the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it, his face shining like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. We're told that the guards shook with fear when they saw him and became like dead men, pale and immobile. Then the angel spoke to the women and said, Don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead just as he said he would. Come and see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! <laughs> oh, isn't the Lord good? He met them and greeted them, saying, Rejoice! And they ran to him. They took hold of his feet, and they worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Today, I want to draw your attention to the great invitation given by the angel. Again, watch. He told the two women, come and see where his body was lying. Now understand that the Greek word for see is to do a careful examination, is to see with more than just the eyes, is to see with the heart and the mind, is to perceive, is to discern by way of experience. My friends, it's the way a mother sees her children. She sees them as no one else does. You understand what I'm saying? She sees her children differently than anyone else. She has a deep connection with them that goes beyond what others can even see or understand. Now, saints, can I encourage you? The Lord wants us to see him that way. You see, our Lord doesn't want us to just take casual glances and glimpses at him. No, he wants us to perceive him with our hearts and our minds in such a close personal fellowship that goes beyond what others can know or understand. See, some of your friends who are not saved, they don't understand what you see in Jesus. 
That's because you're not seeing Jesus with just your eyes. You're seeing him with your heart and mind. It's hard for them to understand. And maybe today you're here and you can't see Jesus. Can I tell you why that is? Because you're only looking with your eyes. Listen to what Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 says. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You get what I'm saying, right? You picking up what I'm putting down, yes? Okay? When you seek me with all of your heart, not with just your eyes. So from the very beginning of our Lord's ministry and up until the time that he ascended into heaven, his invitation was and still is to us, come and see. Today the invitation is to us, come and see. Come and see. Come and behold Jesus. Listen, I'm here to just present you with Jesus. Not the church. Not myself. But Christ. Come and see Jesus. Come and see. Come do a thorough investigation of the life of Jesus. Close, closely examine Jesus with not just your eyes, but with your heart and mind. You see, Jesus lived his life under a microscope, in a fishbowl in the open for all to see. He didn't live a secret double life. His life was without a shred of hypocrisy. Well, get this. Right at the onset of his ministry, Jesus said, come and see. An invitation given to 12 men. 12 men. These men were with him day and night for three years. Understand that Jesus was under the scrutiny of these men. Constantly, day and night for three years. And these guys, let me tell you something about these guys. They're streetwise. You know what streetwise means? Yeah, they're streetwise, okay? They're fellas from the street. If Jesus was a phony, if he was a hypocrite, a deceiver, a liar, a con man, there's no way he's getting past these guys. Jesus is not getting past these guys. Okay? No hay ninguna manera. Imposible. No va a pasar. It's not going to happen. Matthew, the tax collector? <laughs> tax collectors were some of the most hated people in Israel. Matthew worked for the oppressive Roman government, collected taxes from his own Jewish people. Tax collectors were known to collect more than what was required and pocket the rest for themselves. Thus they were becoming filthy rich by exploiting their own people. They were considered con men and traitors. This guy is one in Jesus' team. Okay? Matthew, a professional con man. He made a living exploiting people, being a con man. If Jesus was a counterfeit, Matthew would have called him out. Immediately. In fact, he would have had a meeting with the other 11, called them together, and said, Hey guys, look, if it talks like a duck and it walks like a duck, it's a duck. Jesus is a phony. He would have caught it. Matthew would have caught it. Peter, James, and John, <laughs> savvy businessmen. You don't think that if Jesus was fake, these guys would have caught it. And they're walking with Jesus every day for three years, day and night. Nathaniel. Nathaniel was a man in whom there was no guile. That means he didn't put up with any nonsense. If Jesus was nonsense, Nathaniel would have walked. Thomas? Ah, you know Thomas. He was a man who needed concrete evidence before he believed anything. Don't you get it? Jesus chose the shrewdest of men, to examine his life with careful scrutiny. Who does that? If you're a phony and you're a fake, who does that? Mm. John the Apostle would later write in his first epistle, we looked upon Jesus. We studied him with careful scrutiny. We handled him. We ate with him. He touched us. We touched him. We embraced. We cried together. We saw him. We heard him. John's verdict, Jesus is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. That's John's verdict. John testifies 
that Jesus is everything he claimed to be. He's the perfect son of God without sin. He has no flaws or imperfections, and him alone is eternal life. Peter's testimony later in Acts chapter 10, look at what Peter says of Jesus. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around, ah, look, Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we, his apostles, are witnesses of all that he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. I invite you today, come and see the life of Jesus. Do a thorough investigation. I'm serious. And then you come tell me, what wrong did he do? You tell me, what wrong did Jesus do? What crime did he commit? What sin is he guilty of? You know, your friends may say nice things about you and cover for you, but how about your enemies? If Jesus was a phony, his enemies would have discovered him. His enemies would have called him out. The enemies of Jesus, they couldn't find anything against him. In Luke chapter 23, Pilate said, I find nothing wrong with this man. In the same chapter, he says, I have examined him thoroughly and find him innocent. And then he says, I find no reason to put him to death. Herod, we're told, came to the same conclusions as Pilate. Now I ask you a question. If starting today, I was to follow you around day and night for three years, after our meeting here today, I'm going to follow you around for three years, bro. I'm going to hang out with you. No, I'm talking day and night, man. I'm going to bring you under my careful scrutiny. I'm going to examine your life. Now you tell me, am I going to find some things where I'm going to say, yo, I don't know, man. What gives, bro? Huh? Oh, here, I'll do one better. I'll do one better. I'll put myself out there. If you were to follow me, I wouldn't give you 24 hours. <laughs> Forget the three years. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Look, on Tuesday, just this Tuesday, I preached a message on complaining, being discontent. You know what I did the rest of the week? I'm just like you. I'm just like you. The fears, the anxieties, the worries that are yours, they're mine too. I'm made from the same stuff. Now here's the truth, okay? Is anybody like, will raise their hand and say, yeah, bring me under the microscope. Bring my life into scrutiny. No, I think we would all have cause for pause. None of us are quick to invite scrutiny into our lives We've learned to hide, to not show ourselves. Oh, but Jesus is all the contrary. He says, come and see. He invites us all, and he says, come and see. Bring your microscope. Bring your scrutiny. Bring your doubts. Bring your hesitations. Bring it all. Come and examine my life. Don't you love Jesus? <laughs> I invite you now. Come and see. Come and see how Jesus was treated by his enemies. Those who put him on the cross, those who reviled him and mocked him, come and see how Jesus treated them. Come and see how Jesus responded. Ah, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Some of you sitting here today are the enemies of Christ. The enemies of Christ. You want nothing to do with Jesus. You're here because somebody forced you to be here. That's why you're here. And you heard there was food. That's okay. That's okay. You know why? Because Jesus has been kind to you. He's been gracious to you. He's been merciful. Every breath you take is by His grace. He's patient with you. And you're an enemy of Christ. There's nobody like Jesus. Father, forgive them, He says, for they know not what they do. He's patient with you. Let me tell you why. Because He doesn't want any of you to perish but that all should come to repentance. And here's something. Here's something. If you want to know the true measure of a person, what they're really made of, notice how they respond when they're in the sopa, when they're in the soup. Cuando la cosa se pone caliente. When a person is being squeezed, hey, look, you really want to know 
was somebody who's made out of, watch them in times of trouble, in times of chaos. Cuando la cosa se pone caliente. When Jesus was tortured, when he was put on that cross, when he was beaten, when he was bloodied, love poured out. Forgiveness poured out. I invite you, come and examine the life of Jesus. Do a thorough search and see what you find. Even here at the resurrection, again, the angel gives an invitation. Come and see where his body was lying. I know you're looking for Jesus. He was, past tense, crucified. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead. So Jesus lived, died, and rose again under a microscope with the constant scrutiny of a spotlight on him. The clear verdict of all his witnesses, all the eyewitnesses, from beginning to end, Jesus is perfect. He's everything he claimed to be. God the Father's own testimony in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Precious saints, my friends, brothers, sisters, listen to me as I close. This whole time we've had the spotlight on Jesus, the sinless one, the holy and righteous Lamb of God. All is well. Ah, but now allow me but for a moment to put the spotlight on you and on myself. For a brief moment to shine that spotlight on you. Would anyone here today dare stand up and say, I'm perfect? Absolutely. Any husband want to stand up? So I can see your wife say, sit down. <laughs> Any wife want to stand up? So I can hear a husband say, sit on down, girlfriend. Huh? I didn't think so. Nobody here is perfect. Nobody here is absolutely perfect. Nobody here has never done anything wrong. Nothing wrong. Never thought a wrong thing. Never did a wrong thing. Never said a wrong thing. The thought is absolutely absurd. Why? Because I don't need to convince you that we're all sinners. I don't need to convince you that we're wrongdoers. That we're unrighteous. That we're filled with wickedness. The Bible says we're all sinners. We've all done wrong. The Bible says every one of our offenses, get this, is carefully recorded in heaven. So whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, the truth is we all live under God's spotlight. There's a judgment seen in heaven recorded in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verses 12 and 13. Listen to what John writes. He says, I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were opened including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. My dear friends, listen to me close. You're under God's spotlight. Everything is being recorded. John goes on to say, the sea gave up its dead and death and the grave gave up their dead and all were judged according to their deeds. I can't read that without my heart breaking for those of you here today who don't know God, who don't know Jesus, who don't know the mercy and the grace. You're living on his earth. You're breathing his air. Your heart is beating today. Your body is working because he's allowing it. God is allowing it. And you are his enemy even now, today, still his enemy. And every deed that you've done against God is being recorded. Maybe you're like me. I immediately feel uncomfortable, uneasy, even terrified with the thought of having God's spotlight on me. Please listen to me. I'm almost finished. Please listen to me. If that's you too, you feel uncomfortable having God's spotlight on you. Listen, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the most wonderful message from heaven given to us. The death of Christ on the cross was no accident. It wasn't a terrible misfortune. It wasn't poor Jesus. No, listen, it was God's careful plan of salvation for all mankind. 
For we all have sinned and fallen short of God's righteous requirements. Listen, when you break the law, there's consequences. We break God's law every day on the daily, 24-7. Es lo que es. Lawbreakers deserve punishment. That's all of us. But it doesn't end there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God says, I put my son under the spotlight. And he lived a perfect life in your place. And he died a perfect death in your place. And then he rose again. His death was perfect payment for all of your wrongdoings. And he rose again. You know what? The cross is the payment of our sin. And the tomb is a receipt. When you go and you purchase some goods, you redeem those goods with money. And when you stick your credit card in that little machine that says payment approved, you can get that which you have redeemed now. Ah, the empty tomb is God's approval of the sacrifice of his son. So you have a choice. You can believe that by faith. Or you can stand in your own righteousness with God's spotlight on you on judgment day. It's not going to go well for you, I'm telling you. Or you can make the choice by faith to have the spotlight of God's judgment taken off of you and put it on Jesus. But reject salvation, his only way out, and you'll have every offense, every sin brought against you as evidence on judgment day. Listen, my dear friends, I'm not the smartest guy in this room by any means, but I know enough to tell you this. I don't want God's spotlight on me. I want God's spotlight on his son so that when he sees me, his spotlight is over there and he's examining the sun. See, because what happens is a beautiful exchange. He takes my sin and he imputes his righteousness on me so that now when God sees me, I don't stand alone with the spotlight on me. He sees his son and the spotlight is on his son. It's a good deal. It's better than free food today. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you, you do not want God's spotlight on you on Judgment Day. You want God's spotlight on his perfect son, the perfect sacrifice for your sin and for mine. If that's you, <laughs> if you feel uncomfortable about this message, I'm glad. You should feel very uncomfortable if you don't know Jesus. If you don't want the spotlight of God on you, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Look, let me just tell you this, okay? A lot of churches today, today's a big day. People have had meetings in churches all, all week long thinking about, the people they're going to save and how that's going to bring, generate income for the church and fill the pews, the church is going to grow. I had not one such meeting. We've been praying for you, you who don't know Jesus. And you know what? We don't need your money. A bi Christian fellowship don't need your money. I'm not here to dig into your pockets or to try to make you a member of a bi Christian fellowship. That's not my purpose here. In fact, it is not, it is not even within me to get you saved. Salvation is of the Lord. The Lord does the saving. It's not some, you know, message to pull on your heartstrings to get you send some sort of emotional commitment that you don't even know what you're doing. No, salvation is of the Lord. And you're in trouble, my friend. You are in trouble. Surrender your life to Jesus so that his perfect life can be imputed, could be like this transaction that happens where his perfect life is now yours. And all of your sins and all of your unrighteousness and wickedness is transferred to him. On the cross, God judged his son on your behalf. The wrath of God fell upon him so that you can be set free, so that you can have new life. That's the message of the gospel. Surrender your life to Christ. It only makes sense. It only makes good sense. May the Lord reveal that to you. 
May the Lord illuminate your mind and your heart to the truth. Anyone here even care to say, dare to say, that they're never going to die? Oh, no, I'm going to live forever. You know why? Because I'm eating organic, dude. I, you know, I'm growing my own vegetables. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm doing things for longevity. I trust that technology is going to advance and I'm going to live forever. That's ludicrous. So have you planned to die? We plan for everything, do we not? We plan for everything. You plan to be here today. You accepted an invitation. But we do nothing to plan for death. We do nothing to prepare for the day in which we will meet our Creator. Saints, come on. I want to pray. We're going to worship the Lord. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Salvation is of the Lord. Come and see. Study the life of Jesus. Bring his life under careful scrutiny. Do your own research. And you come to your own conclusions. But if at the end of your search, and you search for him with your heart and your mind, not just your eyes, not just what people are telling you, but you really do a thorough search, you'll find what the 12 men found. You'll find what countless people have found, that Jesus is the real deal. He is who he said he is. He is the Son of God. He died for you and for me to forgive us of our sins so that we could be called sons and daughters of the Most High, be adopted into God's family and live eternally with Him. Do careful search. Come and see. Yeah.